Hello, my name is Kevin Pires. I am a senior applications engineer with Expo. And along with the Expo count team, I'd like to welcome you to the SCTE 2020 virtual symposium. Today, I'll be covering DWDM network testing and best practices. So we'll go ahead and kick it off. Uh, so basically today we'll be talking about uh, um, WDM technology. So obviously we just did the introduction. Um, and so initially we'll start, uh, you know, we'll talk very high level what WDM is, uh, some of the common types of deployments out there, you know, the different uh, spectrums and spacing and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll follow up with some troubleshooting uh, optical networks, you know, some tips and some, you know, recommendations for testing and some of the issues that you might run into. Okay. And so we'll jump right into it. And we want to talk about WDM. WDM or wavelength division multiplexing. And so, you know, as a technician, I worked on, you know, WDM systems for a long time. And WDM is basically when you mux wavelengths, right? When you mux wavelengths. Uh, so you're taking multiple channels and then combining them. So you'll hear the terms channel, lambdas, wavelengths, colors. They're all fairly interchangeable uh, terminology used in the industry to describe the individual wavelengths. Uh, that are being muxed or combined together onto a single transmission medium. In this case, it's a, it's a fiber. Um, one way I like to explain it is it's basically using what I call the dark side of the moon technology, right? So we're all familiar with this graphic. And essentially a rainbow, if you think about it, a rainbow is just demux sunlight, right? It's just demux sunlight. Um, red is a wavelength, 640, 680 nanometers. And so that's essentially a mux demux, is a prism, is a mux demux. And I like talking about prisms because it really gives you an idea of, of, of what I'm talking about here. And so there are different classifications of WDM devices. So the, uh, yeah, the traditional one was the just standard wavelength uh, division multiplexing. So we're looking at, you know, 13, 10, 15, 50, very wide apart. And then if you wanted to get more spectral efficiency, meaning more wavelengths or channels onto a fiber, one way to do it is with uh, coarse wavelength, you know, uh, division multiplexing or CWDM. So now you're able to get up to 18 channels of fibers or 18 channels of wavelengths onto a single fiber. Um, and so about 20 nanometer spacing, starting at 1271, going up to 1611, right? And so up to 18 wavelengths, uh, fairly low cost solution, uh, primarily for metro environments. One of the first places I seen it was uh, was for node extensions, you know, it, you know within the MSO market. Um, and so it, it's still heavily deployed. It's a good cost effective way to increase your bandwidth um, and, and your spectral efficiency. And speaking of spectral efficiency, if you want to get even tighter wavelengths, you start looking at something like DWDM or dense wavelength division multiplexing, 100 gigahertz spacing. So really great spectral efficiency, traditionally on the long haul side, but now we're seeing it a lot for um, a lot of the projects you're working now, right? And so we're getting more and more bandwidth to our, to our end users using technologies that take advantage of spectral efficiency like TWDM. This is an example of how we deploy it. So this is just a, you know just a generic axis distribution diagram, you know from a DAA switch you know over to the uh, remote fi device. And so coming out of the uh, the head end, we're obviously taking those wavelengths, we're muxing them together, and we're sending them down the fiber, right? We're sending them down the fiber, and so essentially that's what we're doing. We're just muxing these signals together onto one common stream, and then at some far end location, it's going to get demuxed. Right, it's going to get demuxed at this location, um, and so this is kind of a standard use case of WDM technology. Right, it's really a great way to take advantage uh, of, of uh, limited infrastructure or to to really maximize the uh, you know the the fiber inventory that you have in the field. Right, and so this is just kind of from a high level how we take that WDM technology and deploy it into uh, into practice. Um, there are some challenges though. Um, Traditional OTDRs are very wide, about 20 nanometers. Um, and so, you know, CWDM itself is 20 nanometers between central wavelengths. So you can see how a standard OTDR trace, uh, if used in a channelized or filtered environment, like with CWDM, DWDM filters can cause issues. It'll bleed over into the other adjacent ports. Uh, and of course it won't work because we're trying to pass or filter light through specific uh, uh, ports, right? Um, we have a similar issue with standard uh, sources. They're about 10 nanometers wide, so you can see the challenges there as well. And we also have a challenge with measuring light, not just transmitting light, but measuring light. So the standard broadband power meter, I mean, that's all I had as a tech for the longest time. Um, it's just a standard broadband power meter. But, you know, a broadband power meter reads the whole spectrum or a larger portion of the spectrum and not discrete measurements. And I'll get into a little detail about that. And so these are some of the challenges that, that we're dealing with 
uh, when we're working with WDM. And no matter what, anytime I talk about fiber, whether it's advanced optics, uh, whether it's simple fiber 101, I always mention you must inspect and clean. There's a lot of connectors out there. Uh, you can have a bad splice. You don't want a bad splice, but you can have a bad splice but still fall within your link budget for power. Uh, but if you have one dirty connector, that's noise. Noise is noise, and you'll start creating errors on your system. And a lot of you know, noise is generated um, you know, when you combine things like amplifiers and connectors. That's one reason why the cable TV market, the original MSO market, went to angled polished connectors because they had less reflection. Uh, because you were you know, transmitting RF video, cascading EDFAs, a lot of power. So you needed to minimize your, your, uh, uh, the noise generated from your connectors, so you went to APC. So clean and inspect your connector is incredibly important. So one of the challenges of a broadband power meter is you're not reading specific wavelengths. So if we're looking at you know, this particular uh, uh, power meter, it's the PX1, um, it reads a portion of the spectrum, right? It reads a portion of the spectrum. Uh, but what, is, but what if, you're, if you're transmitting four wavelengths down the fiber? If you're transmitting four wavelengths down the fiber, it's not going to measure them specifically. It's going to measure the entire you know, all four of them at once, the entire, you know, portion of that spectrum. And so you're going to get total power over a larger range, right? And, and so if you set your, 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 your uh, power meter at 1550, it's just going to give you some value on the assumption um, that, that it's 1550. Because when you set a power meter, a standard broadband power meter at 1550, it's not measuring 1550. It's doing uh, a calculation based on the assumption that it's 1550 because you told it was, right? Um, so that's one of the challenges of, of a broadband power meter. Now, if you need to read discrete channel powers, if, you know, because there's CWDM filters, there's DWDM filters, you need a channel checker. Uh, and it, it will go in there at the individual wavelengths and measure the channel power. So it'll tell you what the channel power is at 12, you know, 71. It'll tell you what it is at 1611 and at 1551, uh, you know, whatever the, the wavelengths are. It'll give you those dis discrete channel powers. And more importantly, it'll identify the channel for you. So on the DMUX side of a CWDM filter, the wideband power meter will read that wavelength. And it'll read it accurately if it's calibrated within that, within that meter. But it, it's assuming it's 1271, right? It doesn't know. The channel checker will know that it's 1271 because it will identify it for you. Uh, so that's one of the big differentiators there. Uh, so it's critically important to understand that. If you really want to step up your spectral testing game, then you're looking at an optical spectrum analyzer. It'll do everything that the other two do, but more, right? So now we're starting to look at optical signal noise ratios. We're looking at uh, EDFA amplifier gain. Those types of things fall within the realm of the OSA. It will go in there and look at these individual channel powers and measure OSNR, you know, and some of the more advanced metrics uh, as, it, as it relates to spectral testing. Um, and so the challenges for an OTDR, um, you know, is basically, you know, understanding... Uh, that if you're in a DWDM, CWDM environment, you need to have a CWDM, DWDM, OTDR. So an OTDR will map out the fiber. It'll tell you the distance to fault. Um, it'll tell you the performance of your connectors. Uh, it'll tell you if there's a backhoe sticking up out of your cable. Um, it'll tell you if there's a macro band, a pinch. It'll tell you which connector's dirty. Um, and if it's a filtered environment, then you can test through those individual CWDM and DWDM filters if you have the right type of OTDR. Right? So that's the, the primary function of an OTDR there. Another challenge that you have to understand is that uh, the details really matter for troubleshooting. So an OTDR is a wonderful tool. You know, I've been in you know, communications industry since 1991. I was a splicer, backhoe operator, you know, repair technician, uh, transmission technician. Um, I ran a lot of OTDRs, so I, have a, you know, I, I, I lived and breathed it for a long time. But there are some limitations, right? An OTDR will, is, is dependent on one pulse width. So if you set it at 500 nanoseconds, like in this screenshot here, it's only going to test at five na 500 nanoseconds and give you the visibility and the perspective of 500 nanoseconds. So it'll go in there and say, okay, I'm going to test 500 nanoseconds, and this is the result I have at 500 nanoseconds. So you get the view from one perspective. But just understand that OTDRs uh, need multiple acquisitions manually for you to really get a full view of the fiber, right? Um, where if you have a multi-acquisition tool um, like uh, IOLM, and so IOLM is Intelligent Optical Link Mapper, and so it'll go in there and it'll shoot multiple pulse widths. So it'll go in there and shoot at, say, three nanoseconds. It'll go in there and shoot at, 
these multiple pulse width and then gather the data from each one of these. And it does this behind the scenes, right? I'm just using the OTDR graph to kind of, you know, show what it's doing, but it's going in there. And once it gets all of the different perspectives, it'll come back and give you one composite view. So it'll show you different layers of, you know, different layers of perspective of, uh, of visibility for that fiber, right? It's almost like, you know, looking through the, the a lens of a camera, you can focus on somebody in the front row, but not focus somebody on the back row. That is an OTDR, right? IOLM will focus on every single person in the room and then stitch all that information together into one photo. And that's this view here. So you, and the resolution is incredibly good. So you're able to see um, essentially what it looks like. And it has some advanced uh, analysis for it. So in here, it's able to identify a WDM filter and it's able to say at 48 feet away, we have a connector and that connector has high loss, right? So it has high loss. And then it'll also tell you, it'll give you some actionable items here. So it'll tell you this, this connector or bulkhead is damaged or dirty or not well connected, you really need to clean it, right? And so, so we're seeing some advanced, you know, troubleshooting um, uh, and, and, and stuff being performed. But from a high level, where does this all fit into the network, right? Uh, you know, connector cleaning is everywhere. So you're cleaning connectors. Wherever there's a connector, you're going to be cleaning, right? So wherever there's a connector, you're cleaning. So that's fiber inspection and cleaning. So you need to understand that. Um, if you're just working on single wavelength stuff, uh, and, and you know that it's, you know, on the, you know, that, that what that particular wavelength is, then a standard broadband power meter might be all you need, right? Um, if you're working on channelized stuff, if you need to identify a wavelength, so if you're on the DMUX or, or MUX side of a filter, you know, you need to be able to find out if this wavelength here is, you know, is the wavelength that you're looking for. Is it 1551? Is it 1491? A channel checker will allow you to do that, right? Um, if you want to get more to advanced spectral testing, so if you're over here on the DWDM side and you want to look at the DWDM channels and measure OSNR, measure amplifier tilt and gain and, you know, some of the advanced spectrum stuff, then an optical spectrum analyzer is your tool there, right? Um, if you're doing fault isolation or doing troubleshooting or, or characterization of fiber, then, of course, you need something like an OTDR. Um, if you're just testing point to point with no, act, you know, with no uh, filtering at all, then a standard 1310, 1550 OTR might be all you need. If you're testing through filter devices and you must have a specific wavelength, and the only way for you to get there is with, a, you know, by tuning the, uh, the, the OTDR, then you start looking at PWDM, CWDM OTDRs, right? And so, you know, that's kind of where it falls in. Uh, one additional thing that I wanted to mention because it really ties into this is that uh, it's important to understand that different test sets can create high power levels that can damage SFPs. So we have a tool uh, within IOLM that allows you to pick safe SFP mode that will use an algorithm to adjust the power levels to ensure that you don't damage the transceivers. And so tying this all together, you know, with all these different tools, DWDM, CWDM channel checkers, optical spectrum analyzers, all of these things are incredibly important tools that allow you to troubleshoot your network. It's important to understand where they fit in and, and how, how you can use them to guarantee the level of experience for your customers, the class of service, the quality of service, maintaining SLAs and MTTRs, all of this stuff comes into place. Um, and all of the stuff, you know, these tools that I talked about, you know, we have them packaged into one solution called the Optical Wave Expert. And this one essentially, in a single port, we have a channel checker. So in this case, a DWDM channel checker with a tunable OTDR. Um, OTDR or IOLM, so we're able to measure channel powers as well as, you know, test that specific wavelength all out of a single port, right? It's a really incredible tool. So out of this one platform, you can do fiber inspection, you can measure channel levels, you can, uh, you know, shoot through filters and do fault isolation, um, you know, all through one tool. So it's, it's really, you know, really handy. So, um, so with that said, um, my name is Kevin Pires. Uh Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to watch this seminar. I hope you have a good day. Thank you.